Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Ladies and gents, my name is Hyozo and I'm Disgusting and we're back with some absolutely wonderful updates to the upcoming very anticipated game Assassin's Creed Shadows, the most liked games of all time, the absolutely best innovations are put into this product in order to give you the most wonderful experiences. <laughs> no, but seriously. It's horrible. Everything is absolutely horrible, but it's also laughable and we're here to talk about it. So if you haven't heard the most exciting news about the game is that Assassin's Creed Shadows will let you pet a dog in game. An absolutely groundbreaking event indeed. It has never been done before apart from probably 30 or 40 games and a lot of indie projects as well but let's put that aside i'm sure that this is some groundbreaking stuff from the developers of one of what it, they want to be the most anticipated game of 2024 and as you can see they're not shy in promoting that because this is the focal point of the game it's not the gameplay it's not the story it's not keeping your players happy Happy is just petting a dog and one of the most wonderful comments that I've seen on this thread is from the user jacket who says LMAO there was just some thread by some indie devs talking about how companies pander with the dog petting and then I see this and I couldn't agree more dogs are cute dogs are nice and you can pet dogs and if you take care of dogs dogs will be happy and we've seen a lot of instances of this we've seen it in Skyrim we'll see We've seen it in The Last of Us as well, but I'll hardly put something like this as a big promotional material unless it is designed for a different purpose, like smoothing over the things that you've created due to them not being received very well. And what I'm talking about is the company's complete lack of understanding when it comes to history, when it comes to authenticity, and when it comes to basic things in the environment or in the setup of their game. I have this post here which I encourage you to look. He talks about and he posted the trailer for the gameplay in Assassin's Creed Shadows which was the Japanese trailer in which a Japanese person is reviewing it and the Japanese person saw some very interesting things that were there or rather were not there that should have been there in certain points. Now this might sound like a bit of nitpicking but when the company goes out and puts a historically accurate Japanese samurai figure as their main protagonist, you would assume that they would know a little bit about the setup, about the history, about the times. And they don't. They absolutely don't. And this is more evident in other tweets. Like this, for instance. This was posted by Grums. And these are some of the takes from Japanese people who have watched the trailer and who have taken issue with some of the inconsistencies. You can read the whole thing on his uh, account, but I'm just gonna read a little bit of it. So, first of all, a Tori is not the entrance to a village. Ubisoft knows less about Japanese culture than Koreans do. This actually I found a little bit funny. The Chinese trailer also sits at a similar ratio 161 likes to 981 likes. At this point I want to point out that the official trailer for the gameplay sits at a 43,000 likes to 59,000 dislikes. This is on the original Ubisoft channel. But moving on to Grimms again. So Japanese women with slant that are really weird apparently not for Ubisoft if you see a black person dressed as a samurai everyone will assume he stole it this is probably said in a joke but who knows Yasuke, who isn't even a samurai, plays at being a samurai and walks through a Japanese city and massacres Japanese people as if nothing had happened 
typical of Ubisoft. Yeah, this is absolutely typical of Ubisoft apparently because this is a complete butchering of history in itself and you cannot claim that this is not done in a historical aspect because you went out of your way as a company to put a historically correct figure Yasuke, who did exist in Japan and who was a retainer to Oda Nobunaga and turn him into some powerful samurai, which he was not. So you are dipping in history, but you're dipping just as much as you wanted to serve your woke agenda and your progressive ideologies and then you dip it out and leave the rest to fantasy as you see fit. Which led to this article by Games Raider. Polling historical error complaints, Assassin's Creed Shadows director promises the trailer's architectural inaccuracies will be ironed down for the RPG's launch. Those are not the key mistakes that you have. You have much bigger mistakes, but we know that you're not going to take action against them because it's already too late and you just can only double down on what you already committed. Which brings you to their next action, which is absolute wild promotion of their product through different aspects. They included a lot of gameplay footage that they thought was unique. They included battle footage to rap music, if you don't believe me. I'm sure everyone has seen this tweet where Yasuke is just mauling on Japanese people with the big baton. I said kill him. I don't know the name of the weapon, but the Japanese rap or trap music is blasting in the background, which is just another of the many offenses that this game has already committed against such a rich and such a ancient culture. But while promoting this stuff, they started presenting certain aspects of the gameplay as unique and innovative, which to me, it was a little bit strange and was the main motivation behind this video. They're basically promoting these aspects as if there's something never seen before. And the focus is so great on these aspects that it is made entirely to make you forget what the other part of the game will be. And I mean the storyline, the background, the characters themselves, the story progression, whatever it might be, and the fact that you're full of historical inaccuracies and just do stuff in order to be woke and progressive. And I want to read out a little bit of the list that I have here on the screen because it's pretty funny and if you are an older gamer, let's say in your 30s or 35s or even 40s and you have played games before the 2000s, you, I want you to just take a list and write down what aspects of these games, what game mechanics that I'm going to list, you have already seen in games before. And I'm going to do this the same for some of the games. So, you can pet the dog, we already covered this. Multi-weapon combat. I can think of at least five games that you can do that. Most recently Mass Effect, Skyrim, Witcher, you name it. Reactive environments. Again, there are a number of indie games that are being promoted online that have reactive environments. You have Minecraft that has reactive environments. You have a lot of destruction mechanics in a lot of older games that are permanent destructible armor. Once again, to some degrees Diablo 2 has destructible armor. Diablo 3 has destructible armor. As to visible destructible armor, you have a lot of games. I can think of Blade of Darkness, which if my memory serves correctly, came out in 1997, which has a ton of destructible armor. Parry system, need I say more? Dynamic soundtrack. If we're talking about the trap music, yeah, dynamic, sure. No damage numbers. I don't actually understand that, but probably something that you won't take damage or you won't deal damage for some of the things that you do and they're done simply to push someone away or to just parry them, I don't know. Again, whatever it is, I'm sure it's not, it's not innovative. Innovative, sorry. Butchering the word. Black and white screen elements. If I remember correctly, this is straight from Ghost of Tsushima. And I've seen a lot of tweets that are now comparing the game to Ghost of Tsushima, especially the game mechanics, which is just disgraceful. Choose between two characters. Once again, you can do that in a number of other games. Switch seamlessly. 
world will respond differently. I can go on into the whole list and for most of it, I can actually name a specific game. But this is not innovation in any way. Yeah, it, there are cool mechanics to have. Uh, most of the games now are with building such mechanics just to make it the more realistic games. Yes, they are good, but they're not worthy of such promotion because when you're doing such a promotion on your main account or anywhere else you're basically telling all the all the viewers that yeah we're doing that this is our thing you're going to see this you have never seen it anywhere else and at the same time you don't have anything new to offer and this is one of the problems with modern video games you have all those mechanics and those mechanics are used by pretty much all video games that come out, especially the big ones. So you need to focus more and more on story, on your world building or on some new mechanic that no other game has or doesn't have it in that capacity. Now, whether or not these mechanics will be enhanced and we'll see them in a way that we haven't seen them in another game it remains to be seen. They might be good, but this still wouldn't be enough to mitigate the bad experience that people will have with the storyline, with the characters and with everything else that you've put out. And it's certainly not worthy of extensive promotion and to focus only on that. Anyways, I think that this game will sell some copies, especially in the US or in the western part of the globe but i'm absolutely sure it will be nowhere near the numbers that ubisoft was projecting or was hoping for because when you do things in the name of simple progressiveness esg dei woke politics just so you can have some form of viewership and some form of attention no matter how bad is it you're not going to succeed up until a certain point a lot of people would hate watch and hate buy and hate play games because they were doing content for themselves as well but in recent months more and more content creators have also dropped this because it's not worth it i myself dropped the star wars franchise with the acolyte because i just can't take it anymore i said in my previous video that i will not be watching the acolyte and i won't watch anything from star wars again probably because it's tiring there is a toll that we pay when we experience bad content and as much as it can drive views and it can drive attention at some point it becomes just too much and it is the same with regular gamers and regular people who just buy the game to play it or just go to the movies. They get fatigued, they get tired and they don't want to experience this anymore. And more and more people are going away permanently because of this or switching to other forms of media. In the realm of games, this is indie developers. Indie developers are much better at this point than big companies because indie developers care about making a good product in order to have any chance of competing with the multi-million dollar budgets that are up against and currently there are indie games that are so much better than almost all of the AAA games that have come out in the last years that things are finally turning around and the good thing about indie developers is that they will continue to be indie developers they will continue to put the satisfaction that they would get from most players first and they will not succumb to woke and dei politics because such an approach will not be profitable for them and will not allow them to gain something from making that game it's awesome so this is all i have for today thank you for watching this video if you've enjoyed it please press the like button leave a comment tell me what you think do you think that assassin's creed shadows will be a success will it flop will it be somewhere in the middle ground or it might actually be cancelled if you want to see more content from me press the subscribe button you can join me on patreon you can join me on my other social which are listed below and i'll see you in the next video cheers and stay fresh <laughs>